What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel and today we have our round 8 review for Supercoach. So we scored 2, 3, 3, 6, not too bad. Um, jumped up a few ranks, 3,000 ranks we jumped up, 5,200 and I think we're on track to have a big uh, a big run home. It should be it should be a good run. Um, team's finally starting to take some nice shape but um, yeah, let's jump in the team. <clears throat> So, went with the McRae vice-captain, which was handy, um, very handy after he burnt me last week. And it's it's nice to finally get a captain option right, I'm not going to lie. Um, anyway, moving on, let's go through the team. So, Tom Stewart, I actually didn't catch this game, but 74, disappointing from him. Um, Chris 121, really good from what we, you know, this is sort of the Chris we expected, 106 average, very nice. Doherty 115, um, my main matchup, I actually needed him to clutch up, so it was handy to have him pumping out a nice ton there. Um, Jaden Short 109, I didn't see this game either, so I don't know what happened with that. Um, yeah. O'Driscoll 61, bit of a worry, but it doesn't really matter because Hewitt and Witherden hopefully come back on. So that's another thing I'm happy. I um, scored what I did with two primers on the bench and still doing, you know, dumb stuff. <coughs> And Deconing 82, so Deconing's one I want to probably keep for a while. Um, just as that backline cover, especially to the buys, I think it'll be really handy. But um, that being said, if there is a Primo up for grabs, I will um, jump on him. <coughs> Why don't I do that? Anyway, Lockie Neal 123, just does what Lockie Neal does. Oliver 135. Um, yeah, I think he's going to be my captain most weeks, especially this week against West Coast. I'm pretty confident putting him captain. And McCray Vice. So McCray Vice against Collingwood at Marvel should go pretty large. Jack Steele played the worst game I think I've ever seen him play at Judith West and at St. Kilda. Just fumbled everything. Just had one of those bad games where, you know, it's just not your day. That was the game Steele had. So I'm not too worried about um Jack Steele. He'll bounce back, I'm sure of it. Um, nothing to be worried about there. But he will come down a little bit in price, I would think. Jack McCray bounced back really nicely with a 144. Happy with that. Took Miller got tagged. He actually had like three or four people tagging him, which was really frustrating, but he still pumped out a 122 because he's just a goat. Um, Cripps, best player in the comp by a mile. 151, yeah. I think he's averaging like 140 if you take out the injury game, maybe even more. So, goat. Nick Dacos, 80, pretty solid. Uh, Dylan Stevens in play, and I took Robin McCombs' loop score. Jumping onto the ruck, so Wits 132, so he's just doing unreal. It, it'll be interesting this week how he goes against Sean Darcy. I think he'll still pump out a ton. Um, and then Pruce has been really good as well, so nothing to change there. Gorn seems to have lost his role a little bit. Um, <clears throat> I think he had like his lowest CBAs ever or something um, this week, so definitely keep an eye on his role because Jackson is screwing with it again. Um, I feel sorry for people that traded in Gorn this week. It's such a high price. Um, but yeah, it is what it is. It's, it's a bit unlucky. And then Hayes did really well on the bench, 98. Hayes outscoring Gorn, who would have thought? Uh, Dunkley, 78. Yeah, he had a down game, whatever. It is what it is. Parker, now this one was frustrating. He was on 80. I think he was on 80 at halftime and finished on 89. So, went completely missing. I don't think he got tagged. He might have got tagged. I don't know. But I don't I don't remember seeing him getting tagged. Or they, they definitely didn't talk about it in the commentary. Uh, Will Brady, 115. So for his time on ground, he's got to be like one of the highest scoring per minute, I think, players in Supercoach. Um, hopefully his time on ground goes up. I actually watched that game and Pavlich said um, at the end of the day, basically that uh, uh, at, at the end of the game, he said, like, I got you on my fantasy team. What's the go with your time on ground? And Will Brody didn't really say a lot. Basically just said, you know, hopefully it builds every week, but pretty cliche standard stuff. So who knows what that even means. Cogs apparently he's playing more forward, so might be one we have to consider moving on. At the moment, I don't have any intention to. He's still averaging eight more points than Butters. So, <clears throat> this is the interesting one, Zach Butters. So, I'll say this now. I've stuck by him, but if you do want to trade him, I think there's it's it, I think it's a good idea to trade him, and I think it's a good idea to hold him. I don't think you can really go wrong with either. Um, I mean, I guess you can go wrong with both, but... Like, I just feel like against North, he should go big. And if he gets his roll back, he's going to go big. Like, guys, remember, he did pump out three, like, 130s in the preseason. Um, so, Zach Butters is definitely one I don't want to get rid of. And another thing that I think with Butters is that who else are you going to get? 
Like, unless you're getting Tim English, that's a, that's a good trade. Because Butters is probably going to average 30 less points in English if it continues the way it's looking. But besides English, like, who are you going to get? Like, a Taranto? Like, I don't really like any of those options, to be honest. But, um, yeah. <clears throat> and then Nick Martin, 88. So, he's been unreal as well. So, trades. Now, we're looking at the most traded in. I think these two up here, guys, are absolutely non-negotiable. Um, Greg Clark. Don't need to bring him in yet, guys. Remember that, because he's only played the one game. He'll be on the bubble next week. Both is another one I really want, and I would probably get. But the thing is, he's got that crappy first buy, so... My team struggles in that first buy. Have a look. Like, yeah, I'm going to struggle a bit. But um, <clears throat> we're going to bring in a few boys this week. So, first things first, we're going to be trading out... Connor McDonald, and the reason I'm trading out Connor McDonald instead of Stevens is because I want to use Stevens as my loophole. Um, and we're going to bring in Jack Carroll. So that's the first trade. Very happy with that. And then we're also going to trade Win Hager. And these are very sideways, I know, but there's a lot of money to be made with these guys. And I think those guys that I've traded out are dead rookies. So that's that's the thought process with that. So that frees up 140k for two trades. It's not great. It's definitely not great at all. But we're going to use our final boost here. And we're going to actually trade out Nick Dacos. So we trade Nick Dacos. We sub Nick Martin back into the mid. And we bring in Isaac Heaney. Now, <clears throat> I think Heaney is a lock for top six. I don't love his role. But he just finds a way to score. And this year, he's just... I don't know. I just feel like I've got... I, th I feel like he is top six no matter what. And then eventually, we turn Cogs or Butters into English. Um... <clears throat> But yeah, that's that's sort of my thought process with it. Let me know what you guys think about um, about bringing Heaney in this week because I, I would be interested. But um, then next week we probably go like a double down again, maybe <clears throat> like an school and or maybe we do O'Driscoll and Cogs or O'Driscoll and Nick Martin to a Brayshaw. I'm not sure. Because, yeah, we're kind of light for cash at the moment. Or light for trades in terms of we've got no boost. <clears throat> so it's probably going to have to be a few weeks of double double down, one up. Um, yeah, it's a bit annoying that we have no trade boost left. But we have traded very aggressively to get the team we have now. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to actually loop Rioli on. I'm going to field Carol. So if Rioli goes big, we bring Stevens on. Provided Stevens doesn't play, obviously. I think anywhere over 70 will take. But yeah, that is my team, guys. Pretty pretty short video. Um, if you guys have any other video requests you want me to do, feel free. I kind of want to get back into doing a bit more content on Supercoach, to be honest. Like, <clears throat> maybe just like some trade targets again. Um, but yeah, make sure you guys hit the like button and subscribe if you are new. I'm trying to grow this channel a little bit. Um, but yeah, thank you for watching if you've stayed to the end, and I'll see you in the next one.